In this video, we will discuss about the next phase of Hubbard's theory. That is, he considered if there will be more producing units in a uh, in a small area, then what will be the case of the bar? How can we uh, determine the market locations? If we consider A as a primary uh, market, uh, primary producing unit, then the, the then the circles or the isotopes are, are delivered prices are the sum of uh, transport cost and the uh, extraction cost or the uh, producing cost. The far we go from the uh, producing unit or the extraction point, the cost will rise drastically, and hence the circles indicates the uh, the price, the areas which are concentric. If the to another producing unit B and C appear there, then they will uh, then they will uh, organize. Uh, around the market areas like this in circular patterns and they will coincide with the market areas with A and by this they will form a watershed a watershed of delivered prices which will indicate the consumers of here will not go to buy A's product here because if they go there the prices will be higher or the delivered prices for the markets the goods will be higher so uh, to uh, to satisfy their needs with cheaper prices they will consume the products here same with the case of c again Hoover considers if the uh, transport cost increases in a ap series uh, what do we mean by that let's say we know the far we go the transport cost will increase by there if we consider this uh, every distance is one kilometer and normally we calculate the transport cost as if we go one kilometer let's suppose we are spending rupees two but uh, and for two kilometer we will have to pay plus two and for the next one kilometer we will have to pay another plus two rupees so the total cost will be rupees six but in but in Hoover's opinion if the cost increases like for the first kilometer two and in the next kilometer if the cost increases to rupees three and for the next one kilometer if the cost becomes rupees four then the total cost for three kilometer then the total cost three kilometer will be rupees nine then we have to pay more for the transport cost the way we have Pay, we have charged with our electricity consumption like for the first 50 units we are charged with rupees 2 per unit but for the consumption of next 50 unit means 51 to 100 unit we are charged with rupees 3 per unit then the curves or the transport cost curve will look like something like this let us say the market is market is situated at a and the material is extracted at r then x x and y will indicate the cost of moving material away from the point r towards m cost of moving material away means simply the transport cost and uh, x and y x dot y dot will 
x dot y dot will uh, indicates the cost of distributing or the simply we can say uh, the um, promotion cost of a uh, promotion cost of our goods the far we go from the market to um, to isolated areas we have to uh, we have to promote our goods more so the cost will increase rapidly up to x x dot and the curve x dot and y dot we indicates that <coughs> the total transport the total of transport cost and uh, total of transport cost and the cost of distributing which is x dot y dot simply x dot y dot is the sum of x y and x dot y dot <coughs> with convex gradient the total uh, the total cost is bound to be more between m and r the lowest two points of x dot and y dot we can uh, see here this point and this point the cost are higher between these places the effect of transshipment Huber also cause uh, Huber also considered the cost of the effect of transshipment which is incurred by this city T. He says if the if in a change of vehicle or break of bulk point which we know by the uh, term of uh, Weber that the change in tra transport mode the loading and unloading cost will suddenly gives a jump to the cost delivery cost both the curves will have a sudden rise to avoid this buyers may be buyers now producers will shift their location or the factories uh, at t but in the case of mineral, uh, we cannot find mineral everywhere. So we have to extract our mineral set R. And for the uh, long journeys, we have to make transshipment points or rest at some towns, which will give a boost in transport cost. Like every other, like every other theory, this theory have criticism to read them. Hoover viewed the transport orientation as something that could be analyzed as separately and did not integrate other casual factors into his theory. We see the change in uh, different patterns of transport. Uh, we can say that he uh, uh, he considered this uh, rise or variance in or variation in transport in different cases, but he have it would be great if he considered them at the first case of his theory other casual factor means uh, the culture of the people or the uh, societal values or the political uh, political scenario of the lo uh, locality this uh, this can uh, as of the present or the uh, real world we know this affects the this affects the factories most but he didn't consider them. Despite his reference to market areas, he was much more concerned with cost than with the demand factor. If there is no demand for the product which I am producing or extracting, then what will we, what will we do with the finished good? If there is no demand, who will buy the goods? He didn't consider demand at all. This is the major drawback of his theory. You can subscribe to my channel if you like the video. Do it, uh, uh, give it a like if you like this or share with your friends to help them in geography. Goodbye.